Hello, everybody. We'll give the rest of them a few minutes. Uh, probably start cracking on at about 6.35-ish, hopefully. Wait, that's that one. Hello, Sharina. Hey, Tomas. You How are you? It? I made it in time. Good woman. Good woman. We'll give, <laughs> we'll give everybody a, a few more minutes. Sure thing. Hey, Payal. Hello, Reem. How are you? What do you thought? Say this. All right, we'll wait, we'll wait another two minutes just because there's a few few people still. Sorry, I didn't know I wasn't muted. I I guess. Oh, you're all right. You're Hi. all right. You're all right, Reem. We'll wait till about six thirty-five. Just after six thirty-five, uh, I think there's a a few Damac two people going to be joining as well. There's just a bit of technical difficulties with the link, so just bear with us. Okay, I think we'll we'll get started. We'll get started now anyway. Uh, so how are you all? Um 
I'm just going to share my presentation with you now. Um, can you all see my screen? Yep. Yeah, all good? All good. Okay, right. Let me present. <clears throat> Actually, no, get out of that. Present. Okay, so as you all know, my name is Tomas and I'm the nutritionist with the with the training room. So today we're just going to focus on the basics uh, of weight loss, to master weight loss. Going to keep it nice and simple for today because uh, a lot of the time these topics are really, really overcomplicated. Uh, it's, it's a simple, simple concept, but it's not easy. Okay, so weight loss is a very simple concept but in practice it's it's in theory it's easy but in practice it's not the easiest thing to do um as we are all aware so just as an introduction what we're going to go through is an understanding of nutrition and calories so what is nutrition what is cal what are calories we're going to go through a balanced a balanced plate uh some smart swaps that you can make while eating out or making food at home um, look at moderation and not deprivation, why we do that, and the key uh, the key ingredient, which is consistency. We're going to do a little Q&A at the end, so if you have any questions and you want to write them down while we're going throughout, through the presentation, uh, just please, if you wouldn't mind, saving them for the end. Um, the presentation is going to be recorded, so don't worry about that. So understanding of nutrition and calories. So first of all, the nutrition basis, basics. So we have our macronutrients. So there are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And that comes down to fuel as well. Okay, so that's our fuel for our body. We have hydration and we have micronutrients. Okay, so calories. Let's look at calories first. What are calories? They're a unit of energy that raise the temperature of water by one degree celsius okay so eat for every calorie uh, the temperature of water the for every calorie burned the temperature of water can rise by one uh one degree and that's the definition of a calorie it's a unit of energy okay so macronutrients have different amounts of calories in each one and our body breaks them down and converts them into energy all right so our macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbs, and a little bit about them, right? So protein, as you've probably all heard me bang on about, uh, sorry, someone just left a message into the car. I can only see. Sorry, Josh, it was me. I'm, I'm, I'm only seeing like the presenter window pop up. I don't know if it's just me. Or yes, same here. Or... No, no, everyone. Okay. I was, I was just, I was just going to say that. Uh, so you only see my face. No, no, we can see your screen, but it says presenter window with a pop-up window, and then you have to click, got it, and then switch the view so that we can see the screen in full screen, I guess. Okay, right. bear with me. Yeah, I got you. Sorry Thanks. to interrupt you. That, I don't want to interrupt you. That's why I sent you. A no, 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 no. Thank you for thank you, thank you for interrupting. If something like that happens, just just shout at me, um, because this wasn't. There we go. Right. This should work a little bit better. Now, how does this look? Yeah, now we can see the presentation. Now, yeah. Yeah. yeah all, all good. good. All good? All good. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll reverse back a little bit. Um, so We'll go back to understanding calories. So we have our nutrition basics, which is our macronutrients, hydration levels, micronutrients, and that all comes down to that one word in the bottom left as fuel. Okay, so that nutrition is basically a fuel for our bodies. And now we have our calories. So what's a, what is a calorie? I'm, you heard me saying it. So it's a unit of energy that raises the temperature of water by one degree Celsius, and that's the definition. But how our body uses calories is we get calories from our food, 
and our body breaks them down and converts them into energy. So that's how we function on a day-to-day -day basis. Simply put. <laughs> so um, where we get our calories from is our protein, our fats and our carbohydrates, which are our macronutrients. And there, they have vital roles to play within the body. Uh, our protein, which is something that you hear me harp on about all the time, is probably the most important macronutrient in terms of weight loss. So it has four calories per gram, and it's the building blocks of our body's cells, our muscles, our skin, everything. Okay, so it's their building blocks of the body. An adequate amount of protein during weight loss will help prevent any muscle mass muscle mass loss. Okay. If you're trying to lose a really important thing to note is if you're trying to lose body weight, you're probably not going to gain any muscle mass. Okay. So don't worry if you're not you're not gaining muscle mass when you're trying to lose weight because it's you need to eat more food to gain muscle mass, unless you're a very, very beginner. Another reason why protein is very important is for the transportation of nutrients around the body. So it's a, it's a transporter, it neuro it transports nutrients to the brain, through the blood, etc. Okay, all these areas. I have there, it increases calorie burn. So how does it increase your calorie burn? When you eat more protein, it costs more energy to digest that protein. So essentially, if you eat more protein than carbohydrates and fats, you're going to burn 30% more calories at rest because of how long it takes your body to digest that food. Okay, so it costs more energy to digest it. Um, okay, and moving on to, that's pretty much it for protein. If I think of anything else, I'll, uh, I'll come back to it. And in terms of fat, it has double the amount, double plus one, the amount of calories as protein. That's why you'll always see probably half, maybe a third of the amount of fat on a calorie breakdown uh, for a weight loss plan. They're essential for hormone health. So when, when you're looking at your hormones, it's really important not to go low fat or zero fat in your diet, okay? Because your hormones are, are essential for your health. Uh, and especially for female health, uh, menstrual cycles, etc., really, really important. It's a secondary fuel source behind carbohydrates. And again, it helps the transportation of nutrients around the body. Carbohydrates are final macronutrient. Uh, they contain four calories per gram, again, half the amount of fat, but the same as protein. So that's why we don't, a lot of people will, probably demonize carbs more because they might think there's more calories than there is fat and protein, but there isn't. So it all comes down to that uh, calorie calorie breakdown. So four calories per gram, it's our primary energy source. That's why I always say before a training session, try and get some carbohydrates into your, into your body. If, if possible, carbohydrates and protein. Is every, everyone okay there? Has anyone got a question? All good. I heard some. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody there. Um, and it's carbohydrates are also really important for brain function. Our brain's primary fuel source is glucose, and carbohydrates provide our bodies with glucose, uh, glycogen, which is convert. Uh, glucose is converted into glycogen, which is our body's uh primary fuel source, and it's our primary fuel source for our brain. Okay, um. That's it for that. I have I have a few other little bits coming towards the end uh, to go through a little bit more on those. But for now, that's it. Um, we have our micronutrients, which is our vitamins and minerals. And why are they important? Uh, just let me put this to the side. Why they're important is to regulate metabolism. We want to manage our stress. They're important for organ function. Blood sugar control, especially fiber. I always go on about fiber as well as protein. Uh, appetite re regulation and energy production. Now, you get you can get these from fruits, vegetables. Again, any like your certain carbohydrates, 
carbohydrates often contain will contain fiber which is really important for the metabolism blood sugar control appetite regulation as well uh, on top of the protein for appetite re regulation um we also have our minerals which are calcium magnesium zinc you might what other ones you might you see um Magne uh, I said magnesium. There's lots of different types of magnesium, but these are all these all have smaller roles within the body. Very important, smaller roles within the body. Now you get most of these in food, but there are certain ones that you won't get from food that you might need to supplement, like vitamin D, like omega threes, like vitamin B twelve that you mightn't get enough of in your diet that you might need to you might need to look at a supplement. But always, always have a look at your blood tests and make sure that you actually need it and you're not just taking it for the sake of it. It's not just uh, something that you saw on Instagram and you wanted to take it. So always, always take care when you're, when you're putting something into your body. Hydration, which is a very important part of weight loss as well. So I often, as well as protein, I always talk about hydration. So it supports your metabolism. It supports appetite control. So in turn, when I say appetite control, there was research done uh, in a study in Bath University. And they found that when people had a pint of water before each meal, they lost on average three kilos more than the group that didn't have the pint of water before each meal. Calorie, calorie, uh, their calorie goal was the same, but they the group that had the water felt fuller quicker, so they didn't eat the full meal. So they ended up losing more weight. Transport of nutrients around the body. So it's it's essential if you think about our blood transports nutrients. Our, it, when we have enough water in our body, it transports nutrients around the body as well. So that's why water, very, very important. Improved exercise performance. So when you feel dehydrated, uh, when your muscles are dehydrated, that's when you start to cramp and uh, performance starts to dip. So it's essential that we stay hydrated so we, that we can maintain that performance in the gym, whether it's on the gym, on the bike, swimming, whatever it might be, whatever sport or whatever you're into. And it supports organ function. Same for the same reason as I said about transport of nutrients. Um, okay, so here we go. This is this is one thing that I think a lot of people need to need to check and need to need to look at and need to be a, a much more aware of. Okay, and that's to stop eating like a child. Yes, these things are okay in moderation, but if you're eating this, if you're eating cereal for your breakfast, if you're eating a, a sandwich for your lunch, uh a burger for your dinner you're getting no nutrient value there you're not getting any protein yes you might feel satisfied but the nutrient value is not there so this this needs to this needs to be put by the wayside um and especially when you're eating out okay breakfast's out i know that i've been out for breakfast with some people in the gym and i've seen them go for like the the sandwiches and stuff but like you can get so much more nutrient value from eggs uh, eggs avocado and toast okay eggs bacon and toast and i'll show you a couple more options in a few slides time and i'll show you some swaps that we can have but if you're going for stuff like this at a at a restaurant for breakfast and you and you want to lose weight you're you're take you're going two steps forward during the week and taking three steps back at the weekend it's just defeats the purpose of all the work that you've done and as i say moderation yes but not all of the time okay start eating like an adult balanced meals protein uh, loads of veggies carbohydrates good good sources of carbohydrates good sources of fats and 
that's the you're going to feel so much fuller you're going to feel so much more satisfied and you'll feel like you're eating more food but getting better results than when you're eating stuff like this all right and i'm gonna the next few slides are gonna go through some examples of simple swaps that you can make and make you aware of of certain things okay so we're gonna go through some smart swaps so the this is gonna be like some swaps and then making you aware of actual amounts. Okay, so this, in your head, a light snack of granola and semi-skimmed milk. In reality, it's not much, it's not many calories. In reality, that's 90 grams of granola and 250 mils of semi-skimmed milk. It's 504 calories for that little bowl. Now, is that gonna keep you satisfied? No, probably not. A drizzle of olive oil. 25 mils of olive oil it's 225 calories versus ah uh, it's not that much in your head this is just a handful of nuts before dinner or when you're cooking dinner that's 60 grams of almonds it's 372 calories when you're eating out sometimes the bet what you might think is the best option might not be the best option and the option that you would prefer more may be better so you can have that pasta and salad for 1,248 or a pizza for 867. Some simple examples that what you might think is the better option isn't always the better option. Orange juice versus Fanta. 180 calories for the orange juice, 95 calories for the Fanta. Starbucks granola bar versus a Starbucks chocolate brownie. You might think the granola bar is healthier, but the brownie has less calories. Two caramel lattes. It's it's just a couple of coffees. It's actually 670 calories, which is close to half of some people's calories for a day. Avocado on toast, 505 calories versus two, ration, two pieces of bacon and a fried egg on sourdough, 360 calories and 21 grams of protein versus 505 calories and 11 grams of protein. I think we can understand the, the team that I'm getting here. How you need to have a look and measuring is so important uh, to educate you on the amounts. Okay, so this, just a scoop of ice cream out of the tub, it's actually 436 calories. Sometimes the bar that you would rather is less calories than the so a quote unquote healthier version. Same goes here. Wagamama edam, uh, edamame beans, probably less grams of protein and more calories than the than the gyozas. I'm going for the healthy option, choosing the sweet potato versus the regular fries that you might you might prefer when you're eating it. This one is quite is quite uh, quite powerful. So like. 20 grams of butter, 30 grams of almond butter, and 30 grams of Nutella is 503 calories. That's a teaspoon where you can have a massive punnet of berries for 240 calories. Toast, same same here. We have the the oil, the mayo, double cream that we would put in, thing, in food without even looking at it. 630 calories versus 227 calories of all that veg that's going to fill you so much. I'm not going to go through any more of those. I think we we all get the message here. Educate yourself, measure things, have a look. Don't always don't always think that something's going to be better than the other. Sometimes, as you could see, uh, a burger and chips was a better option than a salad. Okay. So always just be aware of those things. And finally, we're coming towards the end. Um, moderation, not deprivation. So why moderation is because it promotes balance. And when we deprive ourselves of having those little bits of enjoyment, like that square of chocolate in the evening, it improves our adherence to a program. It helps us to enjoy the program that little more, but it also you savor that little piece of chocolate in the evening and you appreciate it a lot more. It avoids this horrible binge restrict, binge restrict cycle that we often see. So people will go 
on a zero carb diet for a few weeks, five weeks, say they lose six, seven kilos. And most of that is water weight and they end up putting it all back on and more. So little bits of what you like every now and again. I know I spoke about the stop eating like a child, but some of us actually eat like a child every day. So that's more focused at them. Have that little bit of something that you enjoy every now and again, and it's okay. 80, 80% of the time you're good, quote unquote good. 20% of the time you can have that little bit of enjoyment. It also improves your well-being, knowing that you can have something to look forward to in the evening. So what do you need for, for weight loss, right? So a high-protein diet, it keeps you fuller for longer. It helps you to burn more calories at rest, and it helps you to maintain whatever muscle mass you had. So remember, we you're not going to build muscle when you're losing weight, but maintaining whatever muscle you have is going to be very important because muscle burns more calories than fat. Okay, uh, as a as um it metabolizes a lot more a lot quicker. You want to be in a calorie deficit, so that means you need to find where your maintenance calories are, and then take two hundred off that. So maintenance calories means where you are maintaining weight. So I would always main, measure weight over a week or, or two period. If you're maintaining weight then drop calories by maybe 200 calories and create that deficit and you'll start to watch the weight go down. You want to make sure that you're hydrated and you want to make that, take that balanced, flexible approach. I remember, remember as I just said, 80% of the time you're quote unquote good and 20% of the time you have that little element of enjoyment. And don't neglect your primary energy sources. This is, I came to this last because everybody thinks Cut out carbs, I'm going to lose weight. Cut out carbs, it's the best way. Cutting out carbs is a quick way that I use with the boxers to lose five kilos. And that's it. As soon as they weigh in, they have their carbs again and their weight's back up to normal. The key is that calorie deficit. You're not going to lose body weight unless you're in a calorie deficit. And that's that's that. Okay, and um, I think that that's that for now. And again, consistency over perfection. So I worked with this lady over a three month period. And as you can see, like we had a quick drop and then she went on a couple of holidays. She went on three holidays back to back here and she still ended up losing weight and over time lost 10 kilos in the three month period. This guy, we worked together for six months. And as you can see, look at all those peaks and troughs. And that was consistency for the main drop over perfection. They had meals out, they had holidays, but it was all about that consistency 80% of the time and 20% having that bit of enjoyment. If you want to lose five to 10 kilos by July, then these are the three these are the five things that you're going to need you need to move so look at your step count add 2000 3000 steps to what you're currently doing you need to have a high protein diet so look at 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight you want to strength train three four times a week at a minimum and you want to track your bloody food you can you, you can go into into this and say cut out things but unless you know what you're doing and what calories you're having, you don't know where to move from there. So track your food for two weeks, track your food for three weeks. It is, it's going to help you so much going forward. And then the final, the fifth and final part of the puzzle is accountability. So whether that's through me, anyone, any friends, family, you need that accountability to help you on the road. And that's that's it, guys. Has anybody got any any questions based on that? I know there was a few questions sent into the, the link, but uh, if you want to write them into the comments or or shout shout out while we're here. Tomas, do you mind just repeating how much uh, protein per body weight again? Uh, you want 1.6 to 2.2 grams. 
per body weight. Per kilo per, of body weight. Per kilo, right. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. And Thomas, is that target or is it current? Sorry? Is that target or current? So current weight or target weight? Um, it depends. It depends on the person. Uh, and it depends on like all of this is person dependent. If it's if you have a high body weight and you say, for example, I have a hundred kilo man here and he wants to get to 90, uh, 90 kilos, I would probably go for the 1.6 grams per kilo body weight because 200 grams isn't going to be easy all the time. So I would go even, even if it's goal weight, I would try the 1.6 of the current body weight, to be honest. Okay. Has anybody else got any questions? Thank you, Thomas. All good. All right. And then um, there's five five openings currently for nutrition coaching. So if you if you want to avail of it, drop me a message or drop me an email uh, or come up to me in the gym and let's have a chat. All right. Thank you for Thanks, listening. Boss. Thank you for listening, everybody. And yeah, I will for the time. See you. See you in the gym. Thank you so much. That was very informative. See you guys. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you.